In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can use ESLint with TypeScript. We're going to be taking a look at two examples. In the first one, we're going to be adding it to a React project. and the second one, we're going to be adding it to a Node.js project. Now, you may be thinking, why would you use ESLint with TypeScript? Wouldn't you want to use a different linter like TSLint? And this was the one that you would use for a little while, but recently there was a roadmap announcement from TypeScript on January 7th. And it is for 2019, and one of the things that they outlined in here was about linting. So you can actually lint with ESLint and TypeScript as well. And one of the things they talked about is that is the one they're going to be supporting in the future and moving forward with. One of the reasons being, it looks like, is the performance of ESLint. The way that it's architected allows it to be more performant than TSLint right now. And to be able to switch TSLint or use TSLint more without running into performance problems, they would need to re-architect it or whatnot. Uh, so anyway, we are going to be doing ESLint in this video for that reason, because that seems to be the future linter for TypeScript. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get started with the uh, React linting. So for me, I like the Create React app uh, ESLint config, uh, and we can install it by following the README. Um, and I'm going to link this NPM uh, page in the description below if you want to follow along. And we're going to just follow along adding this. Now, if you're using Create React up already, you don't have to worry about it. It comes with it. You don't need to do anything else. But if you're using a different project, say using Next.js or Gatsby, you may need to add this on yourself. So in this video, we're going to be looking at a Next.js project and adding it to that. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the plugins that we need to install to get this working. So here's the Next.js project that I've opened. And I'm just going to paste in all these plugins here. And I'm just going to say yarn add. Um, instead of npm because I like that one a little bit better. And you'll notice what we're installing here is the config and then a whole bunch of plugins and then Babel ESLint and ESLint as well. All right, so once we add that, we can set up a config file for ESLint. So you can call it .eslintrc.json or what I usually like to do is put it in a uh, JavaScript file, which is the other way you can do a config for it. Uh, and then inside that, we're going to copy this and put that there. So here I'm going to say .eslintrc. And then if you want to do the JavaScript version, you can say .js. And then you say module.exports is equal to this object. And there we go. So now we're extending this uh, eslint config, um, and we're good to go. Now, if you're using VS Code, there's a few things that you're going to want to do before you actually see linting in your editor. The first thing is you want to go ahead and install the ESLint plugin. I already have it installed and activated. Next, you want to go to your settings. So code preferences settings for me. And we're going to look at two settings that I would recommend. So the first one is we need to tell ESLint to actually uh, use TypeScript or Lint TypeScript because by default, at least right now, it does not. So if we say ESLint.validate, we can list the languages we want uh, it to actually run on or validate on. So here I had JavaScript, JavaScript, React, TypeScript, TypeScript, React. Um, the other thing is I'm using Prettier. And so we can add prettier.eslint integration set to true. If I hover over this, you can see exactly what it's talking about. But basically, it prevents Prettier and ESLint from having problems. All right, so if you add those things, we can actually go to our code and stuff should be linting. So if we come over to say index.tsx, we can see some linting stuff. But if you see down here, we actually have a problem. It says cannot find module. Now I wanted to leave this in and show you guys how you can see errors in your ESLint config so you can fix them. So if you open up your terminal, which is control tilde, um, we can go to the output window here. And then if you click on this little drop down here, it may be set to tasks by default. You can click on ESLint and you can see the debug log. Um, so you can see here, it cannot find the module ESLint config react. So we are going to add that yarn add, even though we even, I think we installed that in the initial config for some reason it did not get added. Um, so now we can go back over here and we can see there's actually another problem. We need to have this plugin as well. So this TypeScript one. So come over here, we'll add that as well. So that's my recommendation. If the linting does not show up, go ahead and go to the output and check if there's any problems. All right, so 
we added both of those. This is what it looks like if the linting works. So you should see squigglies everywhere or somewhere, maybe if your code has a problem. Um, to tell, we'll test if uh, your code does have a problem or sorry, if your ESLint is properly working because you may not have some bugs in your code. I keep saying bugs, but you may not have something where ESLint uh, has a suggestion for you. You can write this piece of code to double check it's working. So we can check to make sure the uh, hooks plugin is working by saying uh, use state, we can say five, we can say count, set count, and then we can say use effect, and then we can just use the count inside of here like console.log the count and you'll notice what it's uh, oops wow that actually auto fixed it on save but that's what I wanted to show you right here is you'll notice that with this piece of code that I just wrote you should get a green squiggly over the uh, over the uh, brackets there and if you hover over it you can actually see what's wrong with it so it says react hooks and you can read through the message and see what's wrong with it and there's two things I want to mention with this. Uh, it's good to make sure not to get bullied around by your ESLint and know that there's a few ways you can turn rules off and ignore them. So the first thing is if you want to totally shut down a rule, you can hover over it and you can see the name of the rule right here. Um, so I like that rule, but maybe I don't like this accessibility rule or maybe I don't like this rule right here. So I can hover over it and the name is in this parentheses right here. So this one is JSX dash ally slash anchor is valid. So I'm going to copy this and if we come to our ESLint we can say rules and I can say off or actually it may just be false. I don't think off is what it is. Um, but if you say false it will go ahead and it will turn that rule off. So you can choose which rules that you want to turn on or turn off this way. Uh, so if there's one you want to permanently uh, get rid of you can do that. The other thing that I wanted to mention is if you hit, if you get, put your cursor on the line that has a squiggly and then you do command period, brings up a little quick fix menu which is pretty handy. So one of the first things that it can do for you is it can disable the line if you want to just ignore it. You can also just disable it in the entire file if you want to. That will come up up here. And it also has sometimes a quick fix. So we can do that and it's actually going to add the code to change this for us. Now I have my ESLint working with Prettier, so when I actually save the file, it's going to auto fix it for me also, which is pretty cool. Now some settings will also have a show documentation there as well, so you can click on that. And when you do, it'll actually take you to the documentation and you can see what this rule is about. And sometimes they'll give you some logic as to why this rule um, is important and when you can ignore this rule in your code. So that is some things you can do with ESLint, and that is pretty much uh, how you can set it up in React. The next thing is I wanted to just show how you could do this in a Node.js uh, environment. So I'm just going to open up another folder here. We're going to open up some server, and this is just a little package that I set up with uh, ESLint for Node.js. So to get this working, you can install... Let's go ahead and open up a terminal in the sum server. We're going to say yarn, ESLint, and these three plugins. So we're going to install ESLint, ESLint plugin, and the ESLint parser, or the TypeScript ESLint parser. Now I've already installed these, and so they're in my package.json here. And when you add those three, you can now add an ESLint uh, config. And again, I chose .js, but you can do .json if you like. Um, and you can see here I have a little bit different of stuff, um, but it's the generally the uh, similar format. So here you can see I'm extending a different uh, plugin. So in this case, I'm doing the ESLint TypeScript recommended. I'm extending, and then we set the parser here. So you'll notice uh, when we actually extend from React App, it does a lot, uh, a lot of stuff for us. So you can actually configure a lot of that stuff yourself if you want to. So here you can see more settings being set. Um, and this is the config that I've been using for Node.js. And these are some of the rules that I usually like to turn off because I just find they are annoying. Um, and I'll turn them off. And I do like this no shadow rule I'll usually turn on. And if we look at a piece of code, we can double check this is working um, by seeing. And we can hover over and see what the problems are. So we can see if I hover over here we can see tokens are already declared in upper scope and we can see this is a no shower rule is working so you can see the name and see that ESLint is the one doing it. The other thing to note is uh, you can tell whether it's ESLint or whether it's TypeScript so like if we go back to my 
project over here, you'll notice if I hover over here, I can see this is TS here. And if I hover over this, this is an ESLint warning. This is a TypeScript warning. So you can tell a difference between whether a warning is com coming from ESLint or TypeScript that way. But there you go. That is how you can add ESLint and use it in your projects to lint your code in both Node.js and React.